Hi, I'm Carl Franklin. You know, up until this point, I have not installed any previews of Visual Studio 2022, but I did install an older MAUI preview for Visual Studio 2019, the preview version of that. I didn't have much luck with it, so I decided to wait a little longer. So today, October 10th, I decided to jump into MAUI, installing Visual Studio 2022 Preview 4, which dropped in September. It also installs .NET 6 Release Candidate 1.21463.6. And to make a short story longer, it didn't really work on my desktop machine. I kept getting unexplained errors. And then I thought, you know, it would be great if I could run this stuff in a brand new Azure virtual machine. I had tried getting the Android emulator working in a VM before, and now, just as then, it required hardware acceleration that was beyond my grasp. No, what I really want is to use my Android phone that's connected via USB to my local machine, but program against it in an Azure VM. That way, I get the advantage of installing on a greenfield system, and I get to test my app on a real device. So in this episode of the .NET Show, I'm going to walk through every step I took to get to my goal, starting with creating a brand new virtual machine. So stick around, because it's all coming right up on the .NET Show. So this is the goal. I want to be running Visual Studio 2022 Preview in an Azure virtual machine, and I want to use my local phone. How is this possible? Well, I'm not just going to run this for you. Instead, I'm going to walk you through all the steps that you need to do this, starting with creating the virtual machine. Here's my Azure dashboard. I'm going to create a resource. A virtual machine. Just going to hit the create button for the virtual machine name. We'll call it uh, VS 2022 Maui. Now the image, what's that going to be? Well, I want Windows 10 Pro and you can see what it brings up for me. Standard uh, DS2 V3, two virtual CPUs, eight gigs of memory, 70 bucks a month, and I'm thinking I want something a little better. This is the one I want. It's going to be D8S V3, 32 gigs of RAM, $280.32 if I run it 24-7. If I'm just running it for eight hours a day, it's going to be under 100 bucks a month. So that's the one we're going to select. Now you got to put in the administrator name and the password. Using the default inbound port rules. And I'm also going to check this off. I confirm I have an eligible Windows 10 license. And then I'm just going to blow through all of the next tabs. Go to review and create. And I'll hit the create button. And once it's done deploying, we're going to connect to it. So here we are for the first time. I'm going to turn off all of these options because I don't need them. And there's a few things I like to do when I first start a developer environment. I'm going to open a command prompt and I like to set some basic stuff like a bigger font. And I'm old school, so I like green text. You know me. There it is, green text. And I'm also going to pin this to the taskbar. I'm also going to install Git for Windows because I need that. I'm just going to blow through all the defaults. I also like a control panel on the taskbar. And I always go into File Explorer options, it used to be Folder Options. And I like to do a couple of things. I don't like to 
hide anything. So I'm not hiding extensions for known types and I'm not hiding merge conflicts and I'm not hiding protected operating system files and all that's good. All right, so I guess it's time to uh, start installing stuff. Let's start with Visual Studio Preview. And I've made a shortened URL to it, which you can find right here, vs2022.the.netshow.com. And this is really just going to download and install the Visual Studio installer, and we'll take it from there. I'm going to go with Professional. You could use Community, but it doesn't really matter since this is a preview. All right, this is where we need a little help. There's a Microsoft document that shows you how to get started installing MAUI, and we're going to look at that now. And I've shortened the URL to this as well. It's installmaui.the.netshow.com. So here's what we need to do. We need to check off ASP.NET Web Development and Mobile Development with .NET and universal Windows platform development. Uh, I don't really plan on doing any universal Windows platform development, but they say we should install it anyway, so we're going to. Now, if you scroll down, this is a very important step. If you go into the installation details for mobile, you want to make sure .NET MAUI is checked off. So let's do that here. ASP.NET Web Development, UWP, and if we go back to mobile, there you go. We want to check this guy off, .NET MAUI. And install. Installing. And we're done. It's asking me to sign into Visual Studio. And I'm going to sign in using my MSDN account. Okay, now before we run Visual Studio, there's a couple other things we need. Following the instructions in the document at installmaui.the.netshow.com, where we just were, we need to install Android 12 SDK, and that includes two things. First, we need to install the Microsoft OpenJDK 11. So we'll click that. We're going to download. And there's a newer version, but we want to follow the documentation. We're going to use OpenJDK 11, and in particular, this MSI right here for x64. So we'll go through this and install it, accepting the defaults. And next, it's telling us how to install Android 12 SDK. So let's open Visual Studio. And I'm going to now pin that to the taskbar. And I'm going to continue without code. We'll go up to Tools, Options. You can either search for Android or just go down to Xamarin Android Settings. And right here we're confirming that the JDK 11 has been installed, but the SDK has not. So we'll click OK, and this is going to pop up. We need to accept this, and you can go to Tools, Android, Android SDK Manager, and this is what we're going to check off right here, Android 12 SDK. Check that off, apply changes, accept the agreement. And wait. All right, and that's done. So we can close this and close Visual Studio. Now there's another step in the documentation here. If you want to use WinUI, uh, the WinUI library, or you know Windows applications with MAUI, you can install this. I'm not going to cover that in this episode, but it's there if you need it. Now I told you that you can use your local Android device even though this is in the cloud. And the first step in doing that is to install the USB driver for your particular device. Now I have a Samsung phone, so I need the Samsung USB driver. 
But here's the thing. If you just search for it online, you're going to find a lot of sham websites that want you to click on their links to download stuff. And it's usually not what you're looking for. So I've created a shortcut to the Samsung USB driver in case you have a Samsung phone you want to use. And it's samsungusb.the.netshow.com. This is the official sanctioned developer.samsung.com website where you can download the driver. And that's what I'm doing now. Now, I'm assuming that you've already done Xamarin Forms development on your own machine, and now you want to try MAUI in the cloud. But just in case you haven't set up your phone or device, you can go to this page, which I've shortened to setupdevice.the.netshow.com, and this shows you how to set up your device for development for Xamarin Forms, and it happens also for MAUI. So I'm going to install the Samsung driver using the defaults. Next comes the secret sauce for making this all work. It's a tool online, and I've shortened the URL to usb4rdp.the.netshow.com. That's USB, the number four, RDP. That's right. It's a tool that allows you to access your local USB devices in a Windows session in a VM. Now, they have a free trial. But if you want to buy it, it's a couple hundred bucks a year. Now, you can also, you know, buy multiple years and you save a bunch of money. But for one year, it's a couple hundred dollars. Now, I didn't want to make this an infomercial, but I couldn't find anything else that worked better than this. And, you know, if you're serious about mobile development, it's money well spent. So it has two parts. There's two apps. One you run in the VM. That's this guy right here. So we'll download that. And another you run on your local machine. So we'll set the trial version up in the VM. And this is what I'm going to do. Test and evaluate a trial version of the program. I'm also going to tell it to check for updates every 15 days. Leave that checked. Now, of course, we need to restart the VM. So rather than telling my VM to restart itself, what I'm going to do is say no, and I'll close this and then go to my Azure portal and restart it. And here's a hint, you may need to restart it twice. If the first restart happens within like 30 seconds, you might need to restart it again. All right, now the VM has been restarted. And here's the next step for you to connect to the VM with your local device enabled. So I'm going to click Show Options and go to Local Resources and then click the More button. Now I'm going to expand this guy right here, Other Supported Plug and Play Devices. And I see my phone right there, Carl's S8 Plus. So I'm going to check that off. Now I can connect. All right, now we're back in the VM after a restart, and I'm going to go down to Show Hidden Icons and hover over this one right here, Fabulatech USB for Remote Desktop. I'm going to right-click on it, and now I can see all the devices, including my phone, that I can access in the VM. So I'm going to select Samsung, my Android phone, and now there it is, Carl's S8. Now, before we run, I want to make sure all the updates are installed for Windows. So I'm going to go check for updates and check for updates here. And it looks like there's a whole bunch of stuff that I need, including an update to the Samsung driver. So let's wait till all these things have installed. All right, and we're up to date. So now let's build an app. We're going to create a new project. And I'm going to select MAUI as a project type right over there. And now I have a couple of options, don't I? I can create a .NET MAUI app that uses XAML, you know, the MAUI flavor of XAML. And I can also create a .NET MAUI Blazor app, which uses the Blazor component model. I think I'm going to do this one, the Blazor app, because, you know, Blazor train. 
I'm going to call it Blazor Maui App 1. I'm going to allow access. Now, here's the thing. Look at this. Samsung SM blah -de blah Yeah, that's my phone. It figured out that my phone is connected and it picked Android as the platform. As you can see the platforms over here. Android iOS, Mac Catalyst, which is Mac Desktop, and Windows. Here's the cool thing. I don't have to get rid of these just because I don't have the a Mac or an iPhone. Or I don't even have the Windows UI stuff installed. But I don't need to get rid of them. I can just use this drop-down right here as the way to pick the framework that I want to target. And you can see .NET 6.0 Android is selected right now. And also, I can select which device I want to use. All right, let's run this bad boy. And uh, note the time. It's 10.52 uh, p.m. I'm going to take out all the time it takes because you've got to be patient here. So we'll be back when it loads. And we got something here. All right, so it's now 10.57. And I see the logo the .NET splash screen on my phone. I'll, I'll bring it up in a second, but let's wait till the app shows itself. Okay, at uh, 10.59 p.m., the app has finally shown up on my device. So let me pull it up with MobyZen so I can show you what it looks like. So MobyZen is a really kind of old and outdated um, remote tool for showing your phone screen, in this case my Android phone, in your desktop. And yes, it is even working over this USB to RDP connection. So let me pull down the menu here and select counter. Start incrementing the counter. And I can do it here on the phone as well. See, it's up to six. And I can go to fetch data, and that works. This is the Blazor template app running natively on my Android phone. And I'm running it in a VM, and this phone is plugged into my local machine. That's pretty cool. And that's the end of my demo for today. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Please visit blazertrain.com and the.netshow.com for more great content.